Transnational militancy and extremist movements, which are fueled by religious and racial supremacy, military interventions, and state failure, are a global security threat. Despite their differences, many of these movements have one thing in common. They recognize the power and influence of women and need their support. While offering some a sense of purpose and belonging, militant and extremist movements co-opt, coerce, and subjugate women. Women can be effective recruiters, fundraisers, logisticians, spies, and propagandists, and even fighters. But why would women join voluntarily? The answer varies enormously. But many, like their male counterparts, have unmet aspirations for education, security, and opportunity within their societies. They are being encouraged to go for employment. Some of them, they go as brides, and uh, some of them are told they're going to do business. There's this feeling in them that somebody value them, care for them much to want to educate them, like it make them feel important, like, you know, I'm valued, somebody really thinks I'm something, you know. They want respect as citizens and a role in politics and public life. Sometimes peaceful pathways to such progress are blocked. Many militant and extremist groups understand and are sophisticated at tapping these sentiments. Many women are also at the forefront of countering such groups. Women's rights and peace movements have often been the first to warn and mobilize against them. Local peace builders can challenge militants' violent strategies and intolerant beliefs. They can use their social influence to defuse conflicts at the community level, providing positive alternatives for those seeking dignity and belonging, and promoting justice and pluralism. Such approaches are critical. We are now building the capacities of the women those who are my former detainees and others, these abductees coming back, although we cannot hold Boko Haram responsible, but we can hold the state actors responsible. It is time to realign global security to reverse the gains of these groups and avoid the mistakes that enabled their rise. Solutions exist. Military action can only be part of the answer. It must be complemented by efforts to end state abuses and wars that wreak havoc on societies. The women should actually be given a space from the level of preparation towards the level of participation and the level of taking decisions. It is time to listen to local peace builders and follow the lead of those who are most affected and most experienced and who call for prioritizing human security, pluralism and peace.